and it's called Confessions of a Reformed Homophobe. Let's go! Confessions of a Reformed Homophobe. Part one. Here's a case study. Take four college-age friends and send them out for a night on the town. Make two of the friends straight and male. Make two of the friends female, closeted, and aware of the bigotry barricading what they want to be accepted as. So me and my homeboys start talking about this hot girl on campus that we heard love girls on the under. We say she's too pretty to be going that way. We say she's a beautiful abomination while all the time our homegirls are in the back seat giggling to keep from cursing us out because what we don't know is that they have been hiding their real selves from us because of nights like this, Come on. because of dialogue like this, because of family like us, because it's hard yeah. to tell the people that you love that they love a figment of who they imagine you to be. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Point negative one. I enter Earth August 11th, 1980, male child, black, southern, Baptist, regular as can be. <laughs> Categories are convenient. I learned the way I was supposed to view gaze at an early age church pastor. Often talked about the prayer closet, a place where you can go to God with your burdens. He'd have you believing the only thing residing in that closet was the Holy Ghost, but certain members of his congregation are hiding accessorized skeletons, and this closet is doubling as a graveyard for rainbows. He wants us to know that this ain't Adam and Steve Baptist. And this is where Adam and Steve practice miming as men seeking God-fearing women when you can hear clergymen say insidious things like this anointed verse you start to question just how open Jesus' arms are to you because you don't want him confused in your search for salvation with attempts at seduction. Part 2.5 I'm a youth development worker. I got a certificate to prove it. I'm giving a ride home to a young man, our mentor, who's nicknamed himself Virgo Prince. He's become quite the raw con artist, convincing cover-up girlfriends to pick a card. They're all hoping to pull the queen of hearts, and he's looking to find a way to tell his father that his blue blood is periwinkle. His daddy don't have any place for in his kingdom for queers, and the prince already knows this, so he's looking to me for advice, and I gotta tell him that he has to find himself before he can truly love anyone else and it's the lamest advice I can ever give and I just want him to get free and maybe punch his pop in the goddamn face <laughs> and try to learn acceptance of other people's perspective that I was still learning myself. Part five, here's another case study. Take the country's first president of color, put him on camera and have him say he endorsed the same-sex marriage, log on to Facebook and see how long it takes armchair pundits to say he doesn't really believe in that kind of equality. It's just a ploy to be re-elected. See church and state go from separation to divorce. See church tell the judge that state is morally bankrupt but that it doesn't exclude state from paying its proper respect to the covenant of the church. Then watch what happens when the reality of your privilege sets in. I can love my wife behind closed doors and in emergency rooms and in lending offices. I couldn't imagine our love having restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. Our evolution often hides itself in the darkest of places, but you would be surprised what happens when you open closet doors and let some light in. <laughs> 